welcome students in our today's session we will try to continue our discussion related to the business oriented saas products right in our previous class we a session we have covered up certain examples which are related to the business oriented saas products so the one which we are going to discuss today is called as the blue cloud this blue cloud is designed by ibm this particular blue cloud is completely based upon a open source software right now we know what actually open source software is right based upon all these open source software or the free software the ibm have developed their own type of architecture that can be hosted on their servers and the applications which are hosted on those particular server can be accessed by different vendors right then who are the target audience for this particular blue cloud this blue cloud was basically mainly i can say that it was mainly used by the uh, mid sized corporates agencies in especially in the north america section region the universities and even the government agencies blue cloud is basically it is not that much popular in it is not that much popular in asian uh, region but in north america region the blue cloud was very popular the mid sized corporates if they plan if they were planning to migrate onto the cloud so the ibm was have proposing a uh, very good you can say uh, in a less compared to the amazon web services they were offering at a lower prices so the mid size corporates or the universities you can just try to think of something like uh, our own university if they want to migrate all their data onto the cloud right then it is it cannot be uh, purchased it, that means it cannot be taken for a free of a cost but it has to be purchased right in such cases the companies like ibms okay, they provide a very good resources and all the applications can be hosted on those particular resources one of the example i can take you students not with respect to the ibm uh, in our own university the rcu RC, this time the valuation is going as part of a online or the digital valuation so in the digital valuation the data which is stored right all the papers which have been scanned from the uh, previous exams all these scanned documents are stored onto the cloud architecture and now in this case uh, in case with respect to our uh, own university it is all stored onto the amazon servers that is aws like this the universities can think of going or uh, going on to a cloud based where all the data can be stored on the cloud if they want to access any data from that what they require the users just require a computer with an internet connectivity or a browser with an internet connectivity so anywhere they are sitting they can just try to download the documents and access the content whatever the uh, operations they want to perform on those particular documents or it can be a software that can be used certain features of the uh, blue cloud as uh, in 2008 it was first uh, offered to the uh, customers okay and at that particular time they were supporting only on the 86 processors now later they have uh, uh, added the certain more features where in even 64 bit systems were also supported and during that time mainframes were uh, popularly used in the big organizations to store a uh, huge data or to manipulate huge amount of or a tremendous amount of processing powers even mainframes were supported by this particular blue cloud okay in order to make the uh, facility of a virtualization ibm by that by that particular time ibm have developed their own virtualized uh, software or a virtual machine what they call it to be a power vm or a power virtual machine so this again this power virtual machine is based upon a linux operating system you may see here why they were developed it is on the linux operating system because they wanted to go or they wanted to approach for the open source softwares so the zen and the power pm were developed and they were used as the virtualized machines for hosting the applications on the servers okay and they had a great software that is called as ibm tioli software so this is something a new which you might be uh, hearing here the tioli software is basically developed by the ibm 
So the main purpose of or the main uh, feature of this Tivoli is to monitor all the services and manage them and to ensure that there is a proper load balancing taken place across all the servers which have been hosted on the cloud, right? So basically this IBM Tivoli software, it tries to manage the load across all the servers which have been hosted on the cloud. It is very essential part of a particular uh, cloud computing organizations to manage the load on all the servers. So in order to do that, manage and monitoring the load balancing across all the servers, IBM have developed their own software. It was called as TVOD. Okay. And earlier, before coming on to this particular blue cloud services, they had their own existing IT infrastructure. So all those infrastructure was migrated or they integrated all those particular IT infrastructure with the SOA based web services, right? In our previous class, we have discussed what we mean by SOA. Can SOA here stands for service oriented architecture. Depending upon what type of demand a customer or a user is in need, based upon that particular requirement, services will be provided to those certain, uh, those particular users. So keeping that particular architecture in mind, the Blue Cloud was developed wherein the SaaS products can be made available to the end users. Okay. So in the uh, next session, the further concepts, we are going to look upon certain uh, SaaS products which are basically related to a particular industries, right? There were different uh, softwares or the products available uh, in particular domains like a healthcare, a collaboration, constructions, retail, and banking section. The first one is something related to the health or the healthcare unit. Microsoft had developed a particular software, and that particular software was integrated or you can say given to the end user as a SaaS product. They called it as Health Vault, right? What basically this Health Vault is? Health Vault keeps or it, it, it collects, stores and shares the health related data of a particular individual on cloud based servers, right? There will be a type, there used to be a IoT of a things that is Internet of Things devices, or you can say uh, gadgets, which keeps track of our health records like a pulse rate okay, or a blood pressure level. So these data used to be collected by those particular devices and where on a real time manner, they used to get uploaded onto the servers. It is not only just collecting and storing those details, health related details onto the servers, Beyond that, there were other features provided by the health vault. We will go in detail, little in detail, and try to understand what this particular health vault and how exactly it works. All these data, the data which has been collected and uploaded onto the servers, that data can be managed and shared across the family members or the friends or even with the physicians. Unfortunately, this health wall got shut down in the uh, 2010, November 2010, due to lack of certain problems. They, they uh, ran into certain problems, Microsoft, and they decided to close down this particular health wall. Okay. This particular image probably will explain you how actually that particular health wall can be used. You get the users used to get certain devices, IOP certain thing in internet of things devices, which can be weighed on their uh, wrists or can be put on, the applications can be installed onto their smartphones and all. And they used to get connected to the internet with respect to the health world devices. Okay, And the data used to be collected related like the pulse, the heartbeat, right? And that data used to get updated onto the servers. Along with that, they had the web-based applications. Using those particular web-based applications, a particular user can 
even uh, schedule the appointment with the physicians they can track record of they can just view the records of their health related data from past 6 months even and they can generate the reports based upon that okay now there were more than some uh, 40 applications and the devices which have been uh, used by the different uh, you can say hospitals in north american section region some of them are displayed over here you need not to remember these particular uh, organizations in order to just understand more about this health vault i'm just going to play a, a quick video how this health vault works welcome to health vault a free online service that puts families in control of their health information health vault is available free to users worldwide in 17 languages To help explain Health Vault, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Gabriella. Gabriella is a wife, mother, and daughter. She's always been pretty healthy, but she's been working on managing her weight. Right now, Gabriella is trying to maintain her recent weight loss, and she's been doing a great job. Almost every day, Gabriella steps onto her Wi-Fi scale and records her weight. The scale syncs with Health Vault over her wireless network. Gabriella doesn't even look down when she weighs herself. Health Vault records the weights for her. and she reviews them once a week with her personal trainer over 200 devices connect to upload data to health vault gabriella's been exercising and using her fitbit zip to track her activity gabriella feels pretty good about her exercise routine but now she wants to pay closer attention to her diet she's decided that she'd like to consume between 1700 and 1800 calories per day she tracks her goal in health vault Then she brings her social network in to help keep her on track. At home, Gabriella keeps her Surface handy and she uses Health Vault for Windows to record her food journal. This morning, Gabriella had an energy bar after her morning walk, so she logs it in her journal. She loves the built-in nutrition database. She can see how many calories she has left in her budget today. Of course, any information she enters in the Windows app is reflected everywhere else. That's one of the great things about Health Vault. Instead of using single-purpose apps that strand your data in silos, all your data goes to one central place where you can use it and reuse it in ways you might not have thought of yet. Unfortunately, Gabriella recently had a summer cold that got worse and worse, so she finally went to Coho Clinic where she was diagnosed with pneumonia and sent home with some medication. Coho Clinic has a patient portal where Gabriella downloaded an electronic copy of her visit summary. Health Vault helps her move all the different pieces of information from her clinic visit record into the right places in her Health Vault account to update her meds list, conditions, and so on. When she got sick, Gabriella realized that in an emergency, she might need quick access to her current medical information. She decides to use Health Vault's emergency prep feature to create a wallet card that lists her allergies, conditions, medications, and emergency contacts. As she looks at the emergency profile builder, she realizes she hasn't listed her strawberry allergy yet, so she adds it. Since she's finished her course of treatment with fluconazole, she puts an end date on it. Now it no longer appears in her emergency profile. Then she goes ahead and prints her wallet card. In an emergency, the hospital or an emergency responder could use the wallet card to get important information about her. If Gabriella adds an access code, responders can access the latest information directly from Health Vault, even if the information on her wallet card is out of date. While she's at it, she creates wallet cards for her husband and her son too. She has individual records for them in her Health Vault account. During her last checkup, the doctor mentioned that she should keep an eye on her blood pressure, so she got a home blood pressure monitoring device from the pharmacy. Needless to say, it connects to Health Vault. The doctor also recommended the Heart 360 app created by the American Heart Association. She's surprised to learn that her blood pressure still needs improvement, so she reads the recommendations from the experts for setting and reaching a goal. Gabriella also uses the Bing Health and Fitness app to stay on top of her fitness, nutrition, and wellness. The Health and Fitness app syncs with the information Gabriella has already been gathering in Health Vault. 
She likes that she can see interesting content from trusted sources in addition to her own health numbers. Gabriella has the records for her whole family on her phone for easy access while she's out and about. At the doctor's office, she uses her phone to record her blood pressure and share her most recent readings. At Health Vault, we know that health happens wherever you are, not just at the doctor's office. You can connect with apps on the web, Windows, Windows Phone, iPhone, and Android. If you're living with a chronic disease like asthma or diabetes, if you have an accident or an acute illness and need to remember instructions from the doctor, if you've got kids and need to constantly be updating immunization records for camp and school, if you want to make sure your family is prepared for an unexpected medical emergency, or if you just like to gather fitness data, Health Vault can help you manage the information about your health and wellness. I hope uh, you got a, some clear picture about what a Health Vault is and how it works, right? Uh, for your point of examination, students, you need not to uh, remember all these points. The few points which I have just put up in the previous slides, those are more than sufficient, more than enough for your point of examination. So in this particular session, I'm going to use certain clippings because these particular products, uh, we know nowadays we don't use them. Most of the products, we don't use them. Few of them we are using. I will uh, come to that particular point, uh, the one which are going to uh, discuss related to the WebEx and all. Okay. But some of them, we don't use them and we have never seen how it works. So in order to just uh, bridge that particular gap, I have just collected certain videos that will help you to understand what those particular, uh, how those particular softwares or the SaaS products work. Okay. The next one, uh, something similar to the health vault, again, related to the industries in the healthcare itself was called as advanced MD. Okay. Now, the previous one was the Microsoft Health Vault. It was more towards the users or the end users, right? familiar to the end users. On the other hand, if a particular uh, hospital if, is there and there are physicians, okay, for those particular physicians, there was a particular company that had developed a product called as an advanced MD. Okay. Now, this advanced MD, it is provides all type of the building uh, facilities that is medical building facility facilities for the physician office and the billing offices. Okay, it was completely based upon the web based model. When I say it is completely based upon the web based model, none of the data gets stored onto a local machine. All the data, whatever been accessed, right, it will be get uploaded directly onto the cloud servers itself. Okay, now advanced MD had a track record where. They said that the 98% of the active members get usually get renewed to the, their services every year. So that means it shows the popularity of the advanced MD. In the early days, uh, when the advanced MD was being developed, so it was being developed along with the, in association with the Microsoft. Microsoft was already having a health world and the advanced MD had a collaboration with the Microsoft in order to help or collaboratively work in order to develop uh, another services for the advanced MD. Now, this is a dashboard, uh, just a screenshot of a dashboard, how the advanced MD looks like. Okay, you can just have a look on this, uh, look at this particular uh, dashboard and try to understand certain things. So this is a dashboard of a how a physician looks at or the particular physician's dashboard where they can see uh, who are the patients have taken the appointments for the follow-ups, right? Their information would be displayed on their handle devices. By going through that, but those particular details, the physician may uh, provide certain suggestions or give certain more follow-ups related to uh, disease or the patients. Okay. Here also I have a one more video that will explain you related how this health advanced MD works. Advanced MD includes cloud electronic health records, so your responsibilities as a physician become more manageable and better organized. Access patient charts, 
histories, and your schedule, wherever you are. You get real-time access to messages and any tasks that require your attention on our mobile app using your iPad or iPhone. You can review your schedule, receive and answer messages, or review a patient face sheet. The iPad can be used to review and edit a patient's chart, and also capture and post charges. This is particularly helpful if there's a patient emergency outside of business hours. Let's look at how to manage a patient visit with Advanced MD EHR. Your nurse staff can send alerts and messages when patient intake is complete. This also helps you know what room your patient is in. Click on the message to view the medical chart and information collected by your nurse. You can view a variety of patient health information, such as medication, problem lists, allergies, recent and historical lab results, the plan from the previous visit, and today's vitals that your nurse just captured. Scan documents and those received by fax can be viewed here. Flow sheets help you monitor patient progress over time, such as weight change, blood pressure, diabetes management, and cholesterol results. Visit notes accommodate your preferred workflow. The Advanced MD Content Library offers a wide variety of notes specific to your specialty and most common patient conditions. As you visit with the patient and document your findings, Advanced MD automatically provides clinical notifications and reminders of items based on patient demographic and medical data. You can assign a reminder to ensure there is follow-up utilizing the patient portal messaging to communicate and check status. For example, a clinical plan can be assigned to auto-create future appointments, orders, and prescriptions. Patient education can be provided based on the problem list, diagnosis, or any category. It can also be reviewed and automatically linked to the patient chart. Patients have flexibility to view from home at any time via the patient portal. Patient education in any format improves the experience of care and motivation to comply with treatment plans. When you visit with an established patient, you can quickly renew medications. Prescriptions and renewals can be electronically submitted to the patient's preferred pharmacy. A task or request, such as an ordered test or checkout instruction, can be messaged to your staff in just a few clicks. Professional, easy-to-read visit notes, referral letters, and summaries can be generated on your practice letterhead following the patient visit. With integrated facts, you can send a clinical summary of the visit to a referring physician in seconds. Patients can receive a printed clinical summary during checkout. Diagnosis, procedure, and office visit codes are automatically captured in the note. The pre-filled charge slip can then be reviewed, edited, and signed, automatically triggering the billing process to start. While rounding, you can add a new patient and attach a charge slip for billing. You'll love Advanced MD for the physician because your software experience is seamless across the entire suite. You can access complete patient data in seconds from any location on many devices, including the iPad and iPhone. And the EHR automatically passes charges to your billing staff. By watching a couple of videos, you might have think you are you might be thinking that how advanced the Western countries are with respect to uh, technologies. In India, probably we are not using these type of our technologies. The next one, which is related to the collaboration. Okay. Let me tell you an interesting uh, fact, students. When I was uh, teaching this subject in the previous year, the WebEx, which is an example for the SaaS product as a collaboration was kind of a merely unknown to everybody, right? We had never used during that time. But over the a span of a, a year, now we all know what WebEx is. Probably uh, I can take another example for the collaboration as a Zoom here, right? We all are engaging the classes. We are connected each other through the uh, collaboration softwares such as the Zoom. 
or similar applications like a webex so what this particular webex basically is right so uh, webex is uh, owned by cisco okay they allows to record and uh, save or archive all those particular sessions related to the meetings the events or the trainings or even the support services okay few of them we will just try to uh, go through those and understand what actually the uh, those services works as the webex have a type of a service which is which was very popular earlier was called as a network based recordings so basically network based recordings are something uh, suppose if there is a, a session going on like a meeting which is been collaboratively working on that meeting can be recorded over the network itself so when i say it is recorded over the network means the data which gets recorded it can be a uh, different formats those particular recorded videos are uploaded directly on the cloud infrastructure itself it is not going to be up download it, it it will not be saved onto the uh, local machines it will be directly getting stored onto the cloud architectures but webex also has a facility to store those particular or get saved those particular uh, video recordings onto the local machines as well they have those particular facilities also okay now this particular nbr works as an automated like uh, once the session starts based upon the settings what they have put upon if the setting is enabled to store all the recordings onto the cloud then it will go and store it directly onto the cloud so that it can be downloaded by anybody else in order to look on what are the things that happened through that particular meetings or the events just to give an example here now we are conducting the online classes right through the zoom recording or the zoom applications now here we are not completely using the cloud infrastructures how we are not using because the recordings the classes will be conduct are being conducted through the zoom and the recordings of these are getting stored onto our local machines and then these particular recordings we are uploading onto a youtube but if we use something related to a nbr that is a network based recording then what exactly happens in the nbr is that whenever we initiate with the meetings or the classes in the zoom or a webex the recordings will get directly stored on the cloud storage of the respective companies if if it is a webex then it will get stored on to their own servers right once those are uploaded on to the servers i need not to further uh, up download and upload on to the youtube channel i can directly give a link of that particular video and send it to you so anybody who has the link of those particular videos the recorded vi videos which are based upon the network can get access to those particular uh, content they can revisit those particular content what has happened in that particular meetings or the events okay some of the uh, uh, webex suit they consist of a meeting center event center and the training and the support center so these first three probably we are all aware about what a meeting center means event and a training the fourth one is something the support center support center is something uh, these particular products are being used as a uh, uh, service based for in suppose uh, for an example if there is an industry or a big organization they are running uh, certain softwares on their machines and if there are certain problems which might uh, which are seen on those particular systems then remotely the service center or the support center employees can take the access or get access to that particular system and look into what type of the problem they are facing and they can troubleshoot and try to solve those particular problems right so webex also has a certain uh, services related to the support centers all these things that is meeting center event center training and the support these all are a part of a webex suite so i think these are irrelevant now because we are day to day we are using these things even i had a last time i had one video related to how this particular uh, webex works but nowadays we are using them so i no need to uh, go in detail with respect to this particular video let's move on to the next one that is a construction okay so you might be thinking here in construction how these particular uh, saas based products are being used right so let us understand it how the 
uh, SaaS based products are being used in the constructions. There is a particular company called as Computer Methods International Corp. Remember this particular abbreviation for point of your examination. Okay. Now, the CMIC has developed a type of a, a product that is being hosted completely on the cloud. The industries like the architectural industries, the engineering departments, or the construction departments can use these particular SaaS based products or the services softwares in order to perform their activities, right? There are different types of services like a, a getting started product on the grow and the emerging. You can just try to uh, think like there are three different uh, versions of the software. The one which is has a, a less features. The second one has certain more features added into that. And third one has a uh, all the features into that. So what are those particular features? The getting started uh, type of a services are only intended for the small contractors. Suppose if there is a particular small uh, uh, contractor, small sized contractors, and they want to uh, work upon their construction activities, and they want to simulate it through the cloud environment, then they can go or they can purchase with the getting started of the categories. Wherein they get a flexibility or the features of managing all their financial data. The entire project data can be managed on the cloud itself, including the human resources, how many uh, people they want in their particular project, what type of people they want and how they want to put them in what type of a work. Okay? And the documentation part of all those things can be automated. All the financial data like uh, in order to construct a particular building, how much is the cost related, right? The project related data, everything can be stored onto the cloud servers. Anywhere, if they want to access that one, they can just directly get connected with the internet and access those particular services. The second category is on the grow. So this on the grow, the second one, they get our features of all which were listed in the getting started including that they get one more additionally that is called as customer relationship management software, wherein they can interact or communicate with all the customers who are involved or the stakeholders who are involved in that particular business. And the third one is something called as an emerging and they get additionally, whatever the first and second types of categories are there, all those particular softwares, including the imaging and workflow. The imaging and workflow here means a type of a, a advanced level of a CAD and a CAM softwares which are built in in the CMIC software, the cloud uh, related software. The engineers can uh, dynamically create or save all the images and even they can manage the workflow things. A small video here also I'm just going to play in order to show you how this particular CMIC works. As construction and capital projects firms take on a growing number of projects, they depend on greater cost and pricing transparency to keep on budget and on schedule. CMIC Enterprise, a single and persistent version of truth from the back office to field operations, delivers total visibility of real-time data in complex environments with shifting cost structures. Built on a single database platform, CMIC Enterprise has a complete set of unified capabilities. Financial controls to enforce rules and achieve compliance with fiscal best practices and project specifications. Human capital management to maximize staff potential. Asset management to deliver visibility into asset cost to performance ratios. Corporate risk management to ensure regulatory compliance project controls to maximize the profitability of every job, enterprise planning to optimize resources, opportunities, and schedules, and enterprise content management to take control of your workflows, content assets, and analytics. To match a broad spectrum of IT infrastructures, rollout timeframes, and budgets, CMIC Enterprise can be deployed as an on-premise platform, as a platform as a service, or as part of a multi-tenanted cloud environment. 
CMIC's enterprise-level capabilities can also be deployed as a standalone field solution known as CMIC Field to manage all aspects of your firm's project delivery operations on site. Seamlessly collaborate with all project stakeholders, control change management, manage the supply chain of subcontractors and material suppliers, simplify the bid process, and manage documents, all in real time. When your team can successfully complete critical business functions as the number of projects expands, your organization can grow without the traditional burdens of scale. A system that captures and organizes data from every department in the same way allows your leadership team to draw richer insights from all data. Having more data doesn't slow down your ability to analyze it. It only makes your data more robust and your analyses more insightful. A truly strategic solution won't just enable your employees to work efficiently in the back office and in the field, it will also transform how your firm optimizes productivity, minimizes risk, and drives growth, all from a single database platform. Ask an expert and determine your solution today. The next service as part of the software as a service for the industries is in the retail industries, the Epicor. Epicor is a, a software company that has uh, varieties of softwares basically intended for the retails, wherein the supply chain management can be done very efficiently. They had already a in-house softwares that can be installed on the retail retailers. But they had uh, come up with the cloud softwares, which have been uploaded on their infrastructures. And then those things can be directly accessed by the retailers. Okay. Now, uh, just to understand what actually a retail industry and all, you can just try to visualize or think of something uh, big bazaar or a D-Mart. Most of you have might have visited the DMART and all, and you might have seen at the time of a billing, uh, there, you, there will be a, a small monitor where they enter the details, like uh, what type of a product you have purchased and the billing they will do over there at the counters, right? Now, whatever you have seen uh, in the city, in, the, our, in our city and all, these are not cloud-based basically. These are all in-house. In-house means there will be a server which will be running on the back end okay, on the same premises. And all those particular systems which are which you might have seen on the counter are connected to those particular server, right? And the whatever computation happens, it will get stored onto that particular server itself. That is in-house server. Now, the cloud-based means, suppose you can think of uh, there is a big organization or the retailers like a uh, Walmart. You might have heard about Walmart, right? Now, Walmart, they have their own uh, cloud architecture. Okay, now the POS machines, which are installed on the Walmart, they all are connected to the cloud. The Walmart might be, they might be having their own retailers in uh, different cities across the world. In a particular city, there can be uh, multiple branches all these particular branches would be directly get connected to the uh, a single database. Anytime, whenever uh, a billing takes place, then the database will directly get updated on the cloud itself. So now you might have uh, got a certain uh, concept of what are retailers here, right? Now, so this particular Epicor is targeted on the retailers. So based upon their use, the retailers, they may think that, okay, they want to purchase this particular Epicor software for one year, then they can just pay for a one year subscription. Again, it is, it is a subscription based services. Okay, now, what type of activities can be performed? What type of the features this particular Epicor provides? Like the accounting, inventory control, pre-production of the materials, and even the manufacturing execution. All these workflows, are based on the cloud itself. Okay. Now, this particular Epicor has an agreement with the uh, IBM. 
So the IBM has provided certain uh, POS. Okay. Those POS machines can be used in order to just access the softwares of the Epicor. Now, the IBM's Sure POS 700 series, which has been put upon here, this is nothing but a client. This client is being used in order to access the cloud infrastructure. Okay. Now, when I say a client, now you might be thinking what type of client it is. Is it a thin client or a thick client? Right? This particular Sure POS 700 it is a thin client. That means there is no hard disk physically available in that particular machine or the thin client. Because it is since this particular software is based upon the SaaS product, means everything is hosted on the cloud or the client uh, cloud side. So just they just need a uh, computer that will just get connected to the cloud interfaces. As I said, the Epicor had an agreement or a partnership with the IBM. IBM had provided one particular software called as remote management agent. So what basically this remote management agent? In order to understand this remote management agent, just try to think of a, a, a situation or a configuration like this. Now, assume that you are a, a running one particular business in a retail section. You have different branches in different cities. Okay, now all these cities are having a inventory systems over there, right? Like a POS machines at the building site. And you also have a server room where you are going to upload all your data and send that particular data to the all the retailers. Now, there might be a thousands of POS monitors that those thin clients might be installed on the different cities in different uh, branches, right? So then you, you should have a, as an admin, administrator, you should have a capability to access each and every hardware. Suppose at a particular day, one particular hardware went to a corrupt. Then that particular hardware need to be serviced. In such cases, sometime what may happen is that you may not be able to replace that particular hardware immediately there can be certain uh, solutions can be brought in like you need to repair it online itself. Then this remote management agent helps in order to monitor or try to track what type of the issues have been faced on those particular POS machines. If those particular POS machines can be solved by taking a remote desktop assistant, then it can be performed using the RMA. That is remote management agent. They can keep track of all the hardware all the softwares, if there are any problems or any type of uh, issues are being faced, those things can be solved using remotely, right? This is one of the uh, popular service or the uh, popular software that has been designed by the IBM. Not only the IBM, there are uh, different uh, vendors who have their own type of uh, flavors for the remote management accesses. Now, that is what a remote management access. You may get, uh, for a point of examination students, I, again, abbreviations you remember. There is a high chance that you get uh, uh, two abbreviations uh, this exam, and most probably it will come from this particular unit. Okay. Now, the last industry which we are going to study, basically, uh, I'm going to give you as a case study in the banking section that is called as open channel. So have a case study on this one, get the details, try to understand what this particular open channel in a banking sector is related to these particular concepts or the information 